Hey guys, it's uh, Tim here, and I'm going to show you how to play Waiting for Something by Nada Surf today from the album The Stars Are Indifferent to Astronomy. As you can see, I'm wearing my Nada Surf shirt, so I'm all ready to go. Picked this uh, shirt up at their show at the Granada Theatre in Dallas, Texas in June 2011. So if you're at the show, let me know and we can reminisce. This is a great song, it's one of my favorite of the record. It's a lot of fun, it's very fast, and uh, I just have to show you guys how to play it today. So let's get into it. All right, so just before we start, a heads up, I'm gonna be teaching you the part that Matthew plays. He's the lead singer. So I'm gonna be teaching you all the rhythm that he does and the riffs that, that he plays so that you can you know, play along and sing it at the same time. The lead guitar bits, or something a little bit different. You'll have to check that out somewhere else, unfortunately. All right, so the first bit is the intro, and this is my favorite part of the song. It's such a great riff. It's really fast, so you might want to practice it a little bit slowly at first, a little bit slower. So, right, okay, this is how the riff goes, sort of full speed. So I'm going to break it up into different positions. The first position looks like this. All right, so you want to take your first finger and place it on the second fret on the high E and your third finger and place it on the fourth fret on the G string. And then you're going to be picking these three strings, the G, B, and the E string, like this. So this is how a lot of the riffs in the song go. So you get used to this sort of picking, which goes down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. All right, that's the first position. You play that four times. Then you change to the second position, where you just place your second finger on the third fret on the G string, like so. All right, then the third position, you put your first finger on the first fret on the D string and your third finger on the second fret on the high E string. All right, now it's important to remember that the first two positions you play four times and the third position you play twice like this. In the fourth position, you're going to keep your first finger where it was, and then you're going to put your second finger on the second fret on the D string. And now you're going to play these three strings, all right? The D, the G, and the B string. Also only twice, all right? And then comes the hardest part of the riff where you have to stretch your third or your fourth finger all the way up here to the fourth fret on the A string. It's a bit of a bit of a stretch, not, not very comfortable, but challenge is always good. And now you're going to be playing these three strings, the A, the D, and the G string. Okay. And then after that, you're going to let me just double check. Let me just double check this quickly. Let's let's recap so that we don't get too ahead of ourselves. Sorry, I missed the last one up. All right then. Okay, so that's the next position. It's pretty much an E major chord, so second finger, second fret on the A, and third finger, second fret on the D. Okay, also both of those positions, that one and the previous one, twice. And then you're gonna slide up to a B5 power chord. So first finger, second fret on the A string, third finger, fourth fret on the D string, and fourth finger, fourth fret 
on the G-string. Wow, there's quite a lot of information there. But when you put it all together, it's a great riff. So let's, let's have a listen to that nice and slowly. So four times on that last B. The funny thing about doing riff slowly is you tend to make more mistakes playing it slowly than when you do fast, but anyways. All right, so that's the intro riff. Let's move on to verse one, okay? <clears throat> so the first chord is pretty much a, a C sharp or a C sharp minor or C sharp minor seven, not 100% sure, but uh, this is how Matthew plays it from what I can see. Uh, you take the first finger and you place it on the ninth fret on the G string, all right? And then you take your third finger and you place it on the eleventh fret on the A string, and then your fourth finger you place also on the eleventh fret but on the D string. Okay, this gives you a really beautiful C sharp, C sharp minor seven kind of chord. Okay, and then if you can, you can bring your thumb around, all right, like that. Okay, I know it's not comfortable for everyone. But uh, it does sound quite nice. Listen to this. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> All right, so that's your first chord. If you want to play it a different way, you can always play the C sharp uh, minor or C sharp minor seven um, over here on the fourth fret, which is just another way of playing it. I think Doug, the lead guitarist, plays it here, so it's another option if you want. But I'm just gonna, you know, do what Matthew does, right? So there's your first chord, and then you slide that shape down to what I believe is a G sharp, or G sharp minor, if we're in the right key here. Yeah? And uh, then after that, the third chord, you just slide it down to a regular E major. All right, which is, I just use the same fingers, you know, as you can see, two, three, and four, because it's much easier that way. All right, so let me let me show you that uh, quickly. I'll show it fast, then then slow. <clears throat> So, actually, don't don't think I really need to play it slower than that. I know that the the strumming can be a little bit difficult in the right hand. That's something that you're gonna have to work at. Uh, but I'll yeah. Let let me do it slowly for you guys that need help with the right hand. So I'm doing I mean obviously when you're playing the song you know really fast you could you could probably experiment with the strumming if you wanted to change it up a bit all right and then at the end of the verse one uh, Matthew tends to do this uh, little lick or riff uh, by placing the first finger on the sixth fret on the low E and the ooh, third or fourth finger on the ninth fret on the A and he goes like this So he's just picking the low E and the A string like that. All right. So if I go from the line, um, let's see. What is it staring at? Why is he so taken? Seems like he's choosing to believe even when he's faking. That's pretty much what he's doing from what I can see. Right, so that's verse one. Just to let you know, verse verse two is pretty much the same, but it does it does change up a little bit. So I'll I'll show you that just now. All right, chorus time. Chorus one. Okay. Starts on an E or an E five. All right. 
So that's first finger on the seventh fret on the A string, third finger on the uh, ninth fret on the D string, and the fourth finger on also on the ninth fret on the G string. So I guess you could play it like that. Matthew tends to, you know, press this third finger down, so you can do that as well if you want to. I just prefer <laughs> playing it like this. So. Right, so that's your first chord of the chorus, and then the second chord of the chorus is a B or B5, however you want to play it. You could, I guess you could just you could just play the first three, or you could put the middle finger down. So you, you pretty much just move the E across, just like that, to the low E, A, and the D string. So there's your E and your B. And uh, it goes like this. It always feels like I'm waiting for something. So that's that's what's happening there, and then you just take the first finger and you drop it a fret to the sixth fret, like so. It always feels like I'm waiting for something. It always feels like I'm waiting for something. And then the second time, you, it's just delayed. So you wait a little bit and then you drop it, and then you go back. So yes, the whole chorus. It always feels like I'm waiting for something. So it's a quick little jump back to the E and then the B. Right, so we're almost done. Thanks for hanging in there. All right, next up we have verse two, which is pretty much the same as verse one, but he throws in a new chord or two halfway through. So let me play it for you quickly. Here's verse two, starting on Elusive Energy. This is pretty much an, an E flat chord or a D sharp, depending on which key we're in. All of you hardcore musicians out there, you can let me know. <clears throat> so once again, Matthew likes to probably drop that finger if you want to, but I'll just play it like this. And uh, yeah, so let's run through that again. That line where he says, whoever put that fist in the square. So. Slide it up to the E. Driving by Spanish. B. Roundabout part. And then, very important, you drop down to the F sharp. Alright, so we haven't had this chord before, so I'll just show you. It's first finger on the second fret, low E. Third finger on the fourth fret, A. Fourth finger on the also fourth fret, D string. And then the second finger on the third fret, G. Okay, so that's your F sharp major, and you can extend it if you want for a full bar chord, and then you drop it down, all right, to the E major again. So this this is probably one of the yeah, it's not too tricky, but you just have to remember that it happens because otherwise, if you caught off guard, yeah, it's not going to sound so great. Right, so let me run through that again. again. Alright, then it's into chorus 2, which is the same as chorus 1. And uh, now it's time for the bridge, bridge 1. Alright, so the bridge 1 pretty much follows the same kind of technique as the intro, where you're picking three strings with your pick down and up. Alright, so this is also can be a little bit tricky, but I'll walk you through it. Okay, so the first chord, you put your first finger on the, <coughs> excuse me, on the fourth fret on the G string, your third finger on the sixth fret on the A string, and your fourth finger on, uh, excuse me, I, I've been speaking for a long time. <laughs> I should take a little break. Let's, let's just try that again. Here's the chord, all these talks of frets. <laughs> okay, first finger, fourth fret, G string. 
third finger, sixth fret A string, and fourth finger, also sixth fret D string. Okay, this part took me a while to figure out, so I'll just zoom up there for you. All right, can you see? Okay, and you pick like so, all right? Let's go back a little bit, there we go. Right, so I'm playing these three strings, the A, the D and the G string, all right, these three over here, boom, 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 and I do that four times. Then I go to the second position, and it's quite easy, I just, I just put the second finger down instead of the third, all right, uh, let me just actually double check that quickly, instead of the fourth, beg your pardon. All right, so there's the next shape, so we've gone, right, from there, okay, to there. So the, the second finger goes down on the fifth fret on the D string, okay. Sounds weird, I know, but it's actually right, if I remember correctly. And in the third position, you put your first finger on the fourth fret on the D string, and your second finger on the fourth fret on the G string, or you can bar it if you want to. I just do it like this. All right. Right, so I hope I didn't go too fast there. I'm gonna play it for you nice and slowly now. All right. Oh, okay, whoa. It's getting late here. There's actually a storm coming here, so after this video I need to take shelter. All right, Bridge from Waiting for Something by Nada Surf. That's the first bit. Then you've got to slide back up to the E or the E5 here on the seventh fret, and you're going to repeat the same kind of motion picking. Okay, so let me show you that again. Do it twice, then you drop the first finger to the sixth fret on the A string, and then you slide the shape down to the fourth fret. All right, have a look there, it's a C sharp, so. First finger on the 4th fret on the A string, 3rd finger on the 6th fret on the D string, and 4th finger on the 4th fret on the G string. It's pretty much just the power chord that is sliding up and down, okay? And then you're going to go down to the B, which is the same shape, just on the 2nd fret. So, I'm going to run through that 2nd half of the bridge now. up with the lick or the riff, whatever it's called. Okay, so you'll be happy to know that we are, we are done now, but uh, let me just play that whole bridge for you because that is, that is quite a tricky part. Alright, so here, here goes the whole bridge, bridge one. <clears throat> chorus, chorus three, and then bridge two, which is exactly the same as bridge one, but before bridge two there's an instrumental. The instrumental just pretty much is the same chord progressions as verse two, so that's important to remember. I'll repeat that. The instrumental section is the same chord progressions as verse two, all right? And then after that we have bridge two, which is the same as bridge one, and then a final chorus, which is pretty much the same as all the other choruses, they just throw in an extra line. So watch out for that, I'll let you try and figure that one out. Cool guys, thanks for sticking around, I know it was a bit of a long video, this is actually a fairly tricky song to play, so there's a lot of stuff I had to explain, but well done if you've made it this far, and I really hope to see you guys playing this song, because I absolutely love it, and I think at this point there's pretty much no covers on YouTube, so let's see what you guys can do, and if you found a better way to play some of the parts, let me know, and uh, I'll see you guys soon, thanks for watching the video, 
and uh, have a great evening and have lots of fun with the song. Right, cheers. <laughs>